Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, So we've been discussing on Guru Ashtakam or Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. And yesterday we discussed, uh, I believe, five verses. Five. Yeah, we finished five. Okay. So let's quickly recap in one one line what we learned yesterday and then we'll continue today. So what was the first verse about? Maya Tattva. So samsara dava nalilidha loka to save those who are burning in this world. Pranaya. Prana means pari pranaya. Save. Pranaya karam nyavaja mercy. Ghana ghana from. Guru comes as cloud. But where does the cloud get its potency from? Prapta. Got it from Kalyana guna aranavasya. From the ocean, which is aranava. And what kind of ocean? Not salty water. Kalyana guna ocean, the ocean of auspiciousness, and that's Krishna. So Krishna is the ocean, gives the Kalyana Guna and water cycle. The cloud is Sri Guru, and we are jivas stuck in the forest fire of distress in this world. And the rain coming from the cloud is Harikatha. And those who get drenched in that, if you put an umbrella, then the forest fire will trouble. It means that Guru is giving Harikatha an instruction and we don't want to follow it. But the only way to extinguish the forest fire is to get wet completely bathing Sarvatma Stapano, which means to bathe, drench completely, drown, sink in the Harikirtan, the instructions of Sri Guru. And if that happens, then the fire goes away. Does, the, does that mean there will be no more fire, there will be no more envy outside, no more fault finding? Things will go on outside, but the person will be untouched. Padma Patram Ivam Bhaza. Krishna says like a lotus flower in a muddy pool. The lotus grows in a muddy pool, but is still accepted by Gajan and offered to Krishna. What does that mean? We all, we, don't, we cannot change the muddy pool around, but we can become lotuses. That is the purpose of bhakti. Bhakti doesn't mean problems will not come. Bhakti means consciousness will rise to such an extent that you will not see it as a problem anymore. My Guru Maharaj used to give this example that when you walk next to buildings, they look very big. Skyscrapers, they're very big. But when you sit in an airplane and you fly thousand <laughs> feet high, they all look like matchboxes. You understand? 
the problems in this world look very big because our consciousness is low. When we raise our consciousness, those problems look like matchboxes. They don't even look like match. They don't even look like a problem. So it's not that problems don't come, but you will not see them as problems. You will see them as opportunities to remember Krishna. I remember in my childhood, I was once one of my relatives played cricket professionally up to Ranji Trophy. So I was talking to him, and I was about. To, I used to pursue cricket too. I remember asking Srila Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj in my childhood, can I become a cricketer? Can I pursue cricket? Because I used to play cricket for hours, even intercollegiate captain. So, um, so anyway, I had asked Maharaj that, and he said, it's a very dangerous sport. He said, the human form is very rare, and one hit with the season ball, you could lose it forever. So if you want to play something, you can take up the games like chess. So, so. <laughs> it is <laughs> no stress. But then he paused and he said, even better than that is to become a beautiful devotee. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is, when I used to pursue cricket in my childhood, one of my relatives was playing professionally. So I asked him, when the ball was pulling very fast and you're batting, don't you get scared? Because that was my fear <laughs> in my childhood. What if the ball was very fast and the ball hits me somewhere? So he told me that no, when the baller is spinning, then it's more difficult because I have to use all my strength. But when he's bowling fast, I just have to give directions. And the ball will go to the boundary on the speed of the baller. So I don't have to hit. He's bouncing very hard and uh, fast. I just have to nick and it's a six. Or I just have to give direction and it's a four. So he's doing the hard work. So when he said that, my perspective changed. Okay. Then I asked him, now when you're bowling, when the bat, you know, the batsman hits it hard. Sometimes, you know, the ball comes on the face when you're bowling and the batsman hits. So I asked him, so when you're bowling and the batsman hits hard, because he was a spinner. So I said, you don't even have time to respond. You just bowl and then he hits hard. So don't you get scared? He said, no, I see it as an opportunity to catch and get him out. So when I heard this, I, this would be probably, I would have been, how old are you? 10, maybe his age. I would have been 10 or 11, not more than that. But this example was so amazing. <coughs> That even 21 years later, I'm 21 years older too, I'm 31. <laughs> even 21 years later, I remember this. So why I'm saying that is not so that we play cricket. I am saying this so that an average person sees it as a problem, sees it as a concern, whether he's batting or bowling. But a good player sees it as an opportunity to just nick or catch. So same on the path of bhakti. When one is very mediocre, every single thing is a problem. Somebody said something is a problem. Somebody wrote some message on Facebook, it's a problem. Somebody uploaded some video, it's a problem. Somebody took a photo of us and put it somewhere and tagged us on Facebook, that's a problem. Someone uh, didn't give us sweet rice that was made and didn't save us a cup. That's a problem. One devotee in one of the temples, he was complaining, everybody got sweet rice from a child. He said, Sabko mila, mujhe nahi mila. And he was a little senior devotee. So he told another devotee, another promotion, So he said, Prabhuji, I felt you will not have because it's Karthik Mas. He said, Karthik Mas or Margashish Mas, I have sweet <laughs> <laughs> You bring sweet rice. So then the devotee went. And then when he was coming, somehow he was bringing it in a nice cup, you know, here, sweet rice. And somehow he slipped and all that sweet rice fell in front of this devotee, Samne. And in two minutes, all the ants came and they were feasting in front of him. And this devotee got so wild, he said, you know, you're so foolish. I wanted sweet rice. You went up to them, collected sweet rice, and you can't even give it in my hand. You fall somehow, and all that sweet rice is here. 
सो इन दैट ब्रह्मचारी सेट प्रभु जी यू ओनली सेट इन द क्लास दाने दाने पे लिखा है खाने वाले सो मे बी ऑल द एंड्स इन देयर डेस्टिनी हैव स्वीट प्लेस टू दिस ब्रह्मचारी गॉट इवन मोर वाइल्ड ही सेड डोंट टीच मी ही सेड यू गो इनसाइड समटाइम्स दे हैव की यू स्वीट प्लेस फॉर आउटसाइड द रोज देन आफ्टर दैट दे सेव समथिंग फॉर द पुजारीज and for the cooks so you you go inside there may be a bucket so he went inside and that person said actually two minutes ago only it got full you know finished it was actually there that person is right we had an extra bucket but we gave it to all the pujaris all the servers there's nothing to it so what that person should have done he should have just accepted as his fate you know it's called brahma lipi which is the lines written by from now everybody has some quota for every day happiness and distress so he should just come to peace with them so he but got very agitated and he didn't even eat that prasad he got up and he made a big hue and cry and things like that then later he had to apologize to that brahmacharya what all drama took place so i was thinking it's just a small thing right but it agitates us when consciousness is high class the person doesn't even what to speak of skill he doesn't even worry if there's roti or sab no problem whatever is there i will accept raghunath das was from lived off chaas but on milk think of the level in consciousness so the point is when consciousness is low class then every small thing becomes a big problem it's like a skyscraper but when consciousness is high class the biggest thing look like match boxes so we are all burning in this world and the rain shower of gurus hari katha and hari kirtan is what will make our consciousness higher it will extinguish the fire meaning we will not be able to see any problems in it yudhishthir maharaj was adosh darshi he never saw faults in anyone how many times did duryodhan try to kill the pandavas how many times all his life all his life <laughs> right poisoning bhima what else did you do drowning throwing bhima inside the fire by lakshagra setting the whole house on fire and sending them to exile and that to incognito one year they have to hide the whole war what else disrobing rupadi killing her five sons while they were sleeping and what not he had everything with him he had the kingdom he was the king he had money he had food he had followers he had good clothing he had treasury but then his mind was completely messed up on the other hand yudhishthir maharaj how many times did he try to kill the kauravas not once not once what did he have materially nothing staying cloth eating fruits living in the forest making a tent of his own and river so that to river so that to river so that to river so but you wish him or else never complain why because his mind was under his control because it was high class consciousness and duryodhan everything materially he had but consciousness was low class so he made a mess of everything he made heaven into hell and yudhishthir maharaj made hell into heaven so the point is it's not how many objects and gadgets we collect it's what consciousness we live our life to does that make sense yes. you can have multi millionaires and multi billionaires and then they have to take sleeping pills because of loneliness no yeah, no sleep <laughs> depression and on the other hand you have sadhus and vrindavan living under trees wearing a kopin eating of madhu curry and giving pravachan to the whole world saving the whole world by consciousness so first gift sri guru gives us the uplifts our consciousness theek okay? hai what was the second gift bhakti he gives us the path of coming out of the soul by doing kirtan and he himself tastes ecstatic love sometimes he is weeping sometimes hair standing on him sometimes voice choking sometimes body trembling and those who follow the footsteps of sri guru they will also taste emotions so first is the problem of this whole second is a solution how to get out third vikraha shri guru gives vikraha you can see shri chaitanya mahaprabhu gave so many vikras to this world 
Actually, before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, only Krishna was standing. Govinda was standing. Gopinath was standing. Madan Mohan was standing. You can see even Thakurji and other sampradayas. Only one deity. Only Krishna is standing. Bhakti Vihariji, only Krishna is standing. Radha Vallabha, only Krishna is standing. Uh, but you can see one Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. Gopinda got Radharani. Radha Gopinda. Gopinath got Radharani. Radha Gopinath. Damodar got Radharani. Radha Damodar. And the deity that manifested from a Shaligan Srila is only Krishna. But his name is Radha Ramana. When you go to Govinda Dev, Radha Govinda Dev, sometimes devotees may say, I'm going to Govinda Dev. I'm going to Gopinath for Darshan. I'm going to Damodar. But you will never hear anyone say, I'm going to Raman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Radha Raman. This is the gift of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. To all the Krishnas who are alone, he gave Radha Radha and Krishna. So many Radha and Vikras didn't exist. Pre Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu who flooded the world with Radha Rani's Vikra. Before that, you can see in so many ancient temples, even in South India, you can see Udupi, Krishna. Krishna is standing, no Radha Rani. But it was Mahaprabhu who gave Radha Rani's Vikra to the whole world. Therefore, Jadi Gauranga Nahoito, Taveki Hoito, Kema Nidhare Tamde, Radhar Mahima, Prema Rasasima Jagata Janata. If not for Shri Shachimandan Gauravali, Radharani wouldn't have manifested in this world. So, so many Vikras have come in this world, in the Gaudiya Parampara. And Prabhupada took it like on a global scale. As many Radharani's Prabhupada has installed, nobody ever installed so much. Who would have imagined in a place like Atlanta, Georgia, you will have Radha Madan Mohan? Think about it hundred years ago. In the, in the consciousness and the quality of life that was being led. It was ridiculous. Even the thought to have Radharani appear in Sarpasaro and then Charanamrit and Sringar Seva and Mangalarati and festivals, Julan Yatra, it's not. Forget it. It's like Haribo. <laughs> it's beyond our imagination. Too good to be true. But Srila Prabhupada made the impossible possible. So Vigra is a gift. Gift by Sri Guru. So many shops and Lloyd Bazaar, their profit is going because of his son. So many devotees want Kantimala, so many want Gaurnitai, so, so many want Big Bag. <laughs> one time, one shopkeeper in Lloyd Bazaar was telling me, Aapke Prabhupada ke karan hamari saath pidiya anna hai. Seven generations are being fed because of your Prabhupada, he told me. I didn't understand. I said, How? He said, look at my shop. He said, the most uh, purchased item are Gaurnita deities. He said, who spread the blessings and the mercy of Gaurnita? He said, and people who purchase are also Russians and Americans and Europeans. He said, Hum to kabhi soche bhi nahi. Ki bahar ke loga. He was saying, Hum, hame to ab Russian seekhna pad raha hai. Yabar chalane ke liye. <laughs> Said we have to learn Russian to keep up. Brindavan me kabi Russian hota hi nahi tha. Ab wo Hindi bol rahe, ham Russian bol rahe. He said, "Aapke Prabhupad ki den hai ki Kartik me hajaro ki sankhya me log aate hain Brindavan. Brindavan ki mahima, Kartik ki mahima, Radha Krishna Vigrahi ki mahima, Bhajan ki mahima. Shila Prabhupad ji ne pura jagat me pasar de diya." He spread it to the whole world. So this Vikra Tattva is a gift. Fourth gift. Mahaprasadam. Wherever you go, let's say if you have a change in your job and then you have to go somewhere. What's the first thing you think about? Ah, Govindas, you think about temple. <laughs> you think about temple, you think about center, you think about local devotees. Yeah? This gift of prasadam. Devotees think, just take prasadam out of your life, life will become miserable. Because at the end of the day, whatever philosophy you speak, you have to you have to eat and drink something. Water we can drink, but what to speak of eating? We can cook at our home and offer, but if we don't get that global help, then we'll have to take shelter of vegan restaurants, vegetarian restaurants, and 
that's not the best. You know, sometimes it's really you're in a place where there's no temple, no center, no devotees. I would still not say a yes, but you know, that's like the last in the rank. But everywhere you go, you can just walk into an Iskan temple and then devotees will say, come, come, have prasad. I was hearing the interview of one devotee the other day. <clears throat> it was actually a sannyasi now. And he was mentioning that he joined, that he actually was working Indian body sannyasi. He said that he was uh, working in Boston. This is 1984-85. And then he just happened to come to Iskon Boston because he checked if there's uh, any temple and they said Iskon. <laughs> so he just came and he knocked and an uh, American body brahmachari opened the door. He said, you're welcome to Krishna's temple. And this Indian bodied person who was working in Boston, he felt, you know, wow, even in India, in the Hindu temple, I don't get a welcome like this. He entered. And that Brahmachari straight took him to Prasadam Hall. He said, You come. And he had no clue. He had ne temple generally means, you know, there are more deities than devotees. <laughs> right? You can go to any Hindu temple. Like you have, like, 311 trillion, 40 billion meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly any devotee. You're all alone. And so many deities. And prasadam is like, you know, like shira or like something. And no, bus, bus, bus. You know, when people come initially, when you give them little more, they prasad, bus. This is enough. But then you get iskonized. <laughs> and then when you get only so much, only so much, <laughs> there is a plate, right? Our concept of prasad changed. Is it not? Yes. Before it's gone, prasad means little, you know, some little, some, and that should be also, thank you, thank you. Either it's gone, they will say, ah, puri le, you know, roti thona, roti, second servant prasad, you know. So this devotee was saying he was taken straight to the prasadam hall and he was given a full meal and then at the end he had to ask, but what about Bhagavan? The Brahmacharya said, oh, okay, okay, you didn't have darshan, I'll take you there also. It was almost like it was the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> he had to remind the person that I actually want to see deities also. Then he was taken, he, he had darshan and he had a very nice experience. So this Brahmacharya said, what do you do for your eating? He said, I just live with roommates and it's difficult. He said, why don't you come every evening? We have Indian vegetarian meal. He said, I can come. Oh, yes, you can come. What should I pay? He said, it's free. You can come. <laughs> you know, in 1985, living in the cold of Boston and somebody says, come for free food. It's like, very go. Krishna is very merciful, very kind. Magnanimity to its best. So the devotee started coming. And after four or five days, this Brahmachari asked him, can you help me <clears throat> just clean up and scrub little vessels, if that's okay with you? He said, why not? I'm eating free anyway. I want to reciprocate. You're not taking any money. I'll help you. Then every day he used to come, he used to eat and also scrub the pots. Then it so happened, his eating reduced and his service increased. Today he said, yes. Yeah. How amazing. The prasadam attracts, you know, most devotees were made by prasadam only. Actually, most devotees are still devotees because of prasadam. <laughs> <laughs> if you take the prasadam out, our outreach preaching will stop. <laughs> and even those whom we have cultivated, they will also. Be. So prasadam is like holding. It's getting devotees inside and those who are inside prasadam is maintaining. Is it not? See, Chapa, we don't have taste. Somehow to finish. Deities are not talking back to us. Books, we open, we fall asleep. Speakers like me, boring. We sit for kirtan, but then we can. It's like five, ten minutes. But what's the main thing? If prasadam is not there, then we will all collapse. Imagine if there are programs, two hours, skip them, two hours class, then everybody know you go home and eat. Then slowly you will see RSVP will reduce. <laughs> right? 
But when there's prasadam, when there's kirtan, even if that's not proper, katha, even if that's not proper, then prasadam. You can see Sunday feast also, most temples. Class, 10 people. That too, five of them are like, oh, I didn't know there is a class not first yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just happened to come to the temple to take darshan. They say, sit down, I can't even be. And the remaining five who are there, one is maybe the pujari who has service after the class. One is the speaker himself. <laughs> and two friends. So 10 people. Kirtan, you will see about 25, 30. Prasadam, you will see about 250. <laughs> it's long queue. Suddenly, it's like the demigods have taken human homes. So it's actually a gift of the parampara. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also, when he fed his devotees, he fed up to the neck. But now here comes a caution. And it's a much needed caution. It's okay to encourage devotees who are coming in you to eat as much as possible and you know eat up to the neck, go, you know, eat your way back home back to God and things like that. But as we make spiritual advancement, we want to make sure that our eating is less. Because what happens is devotees in their 30s and 40s, they're having big bellies, eating so much, no exercise, IT job for 10 hours, 12 hours, and thanks to COVID, nobody gets out of it. <laughs> they're sitting in the same dress in the same place. And then everybody has diabetes, cholesterol, triglycerides, IBP. So we need some regulation. Yukta ahara vihara Time of eating. Quantity of eating, quality of eating, and exercise. No eating after 7, max, 6.37, cut off, nothing after that. Because, see, for devotees, we have to backtrack. Most important activities in the morning. If you sleep through Brahma Murta, then your chanting is remaining, then you start your day on a negative note, groggy, right? Then you're not reading, you're not hearing, you feel like in I didn't wake up, my date is on time. Stat itself is wrong. But on the other hand, you wake up, you chant, you read, you worship your deities. By 8 o'clock, you feel good stuff, is it not? Now, for you to do that successfully, you have to sleep early. And for you to sleep early, you have to eat three hours before that. Otherwise, what's going to happen is we, we eat late and then we sleep late. And then when we are asleep, our body is still digesting the food that is in the cell. I am not a dietitian, but the reason I am saying this is Krishna talks about it, in, about it in the Gita. And if we as Vaishnavas, as sadhakas, don't speak about all these things, important things, where will the discussion be then? Right? So early meal, giving three, four hours before we hit the bed, 10 o'clock, 9 30, 10, we hit the bed, we wake up early, we chant. And then it's a good dinacharya, it's a good schedule. So that should be our calling as devotees. Reducing. If you like sweet, no problem. Take 50% of what you generally take. If you like to eat five rotis, take three. And you'll see you live. Not that you're going to die. There are more people having health problems because of overeating than people dying because of undereating. Less eating. By eating less, we will only efficiency will only increase. Why? Because when you eat, automatically laziness sets in. What is food supposed to give us? Energy. And what's the definition of energy? Energy is the capacity to do work. But if we eat so much and now you feel like, then where's the energy? Where's the work? Where's the bhajan? Where's the sadhana? Right? So we eat so much and then to eat so much, you have to cook so much. To cook so much, you have to purchase so much. In America, so much groceries purchased. And you keep it in the, sometimes in the closet, sometimes in the cabins, sometimes in the garage. And many of the things are wasted even. And then we, money is lost, cooking time is lost, scrubbing of the pots. And then we eat, and then we sleep because of sluggishness. Food doesn't digest, we have to go to the restroom. After that, we have to pay. Time is lost. What is going on? If you just skip one meal or you reduce the quantity, you will see your efficiency go better. And I'm telling you this by practically implementing this. 
I used to eat a lot before. Even now I eat a lot, but it's been in my radar to cut quantity and quality. And instead replace, you feeling hungry, instead of putting in grains in your stomach, you can eat a lot. And you will see your efficiency will be better. You will not feel asleep after eating your food. Right? So anyway, that's a, a caution for making advancement. So that's the fourth gift. What was the fifth gift in Guru Tattva? The worship of Radha and Krishna. Every Sampradaya has a Ishtadev. Sri Sampradaya has Lakshmi Narayan, Lakshmi Nishinga. Similarly, you can see the Ramanandi Sadhus, they have Sita Ram. Tulsi Dasji, Goswami Tulsi Dasji. They worship Sita Ram. Nimbark Sampradaya also has Radha Krishna. Our Sampradaya, Gaudiya Parampara, has Radha Krishna. And more focus at the Lotus Feet of Srimati Radha. This is our Sampradaya. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur one time was asked by his disciples when the king of Jaipur was doing Dandavati Parikrama of Radha Kund and Sham Kund. The disciples of Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur asked, look, this king has so much love for Radharani. Otherwise, why will somebody offer obeisances and do Parikrama? You see, you know what the Dandavati Parikrama is? Parikrama means you walk by foot. Circumambulation. But Dandavati Parikrama means you offer obeisances. And where your hand reaches the ground, touches the ground, you get up and offer another. And in this way, you sort of come The king was doing this. So the disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, he has so much love for Radharani. And this is why he's doing it. Saraswati Thakur said, no, actually he has love for Krishna. He has love for Krishna. And because Krishna has lost his heart to Srimati Radharani, they also respect Srimati Radharani. He said, we are not like that. Our love is at the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. And because she has lost her heart to Krishna, we give him a flower too. <laughs> they give a garland to Krishna and flower to Radharani. We give a garland to Srimati Radharani and flower to Krishna. This is our Sampradaya. The Gaudiya Parampara. Hmm? Attachment to the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. And worshipping Radha Krishna. This is our Sampradaya. So, in the fifth verse, the gift is Radha Krishna Seva. Therefore, you can see all our songs. Jaya Jaya Radha Krishna Yuga Namilan. Bhakti Vinod Thakur sings all glories, all glories to the meeting of Radha and Krishna. Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan. All glories to Radha Rani, all glories to Krishna, and all glories to their beautiful, wonderful land of divine ecstatic love, Sri Vrindavan. Radha Krishna Pranamor, Jugala Kishor, Jeevane Marane Gati, Aranani Mor. Bhakti uh, Shiva Narottanda Stakur says that life or at death, I am not going to change my decision that the life and soul of my existence is Radha and Krishna. Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Dalite. O Radharani, O beloved of Madhava. This is how Rupa Goswami calls Radharani. Rupa Goswami has given very beautiful names to Radharani. Very beautiful. In one song, Srila Rupa Goswami calls Radharani as Kirtida Pati Ujjwala Kalpavalli. Such a big name. What does it mean? Kirtida means the mother. And Pati? Prashabhanu Maharaj. Kirtida Pati Ujjwala Kalpavalli. Which means Prashabhanu Maharaj is like a tree. And Radharani's Ujjwala, self-effulgent, Kalpavalli, a creeper wrapped around the trunk of this visual filling tree called Vrishabhanu. <laughs> Vrishabhanu Maharaj is a visual filling desire tree and Radharani is a golden creeper wrapped around it. How beautiful. How beautiful. What's the sound? Hmm. Something to do with the speaker. By hearing about Srimati Radharani, the loudspeaker has started to speak. <laughs> Somehow the sound is. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. So, this is the fifth gift that Guru gives. Now, the sixth gift. Let us see. 
निकुंज यो नौरति के लिए Only, you know, it was only one Shaligram that I served. 
And I do this only once a year when there's a rescue. If you really want to know who's a better devotee, there's another king who serves Shalikram Shila every day. So now that money goes there. Then when he goes to that king, that king says, actually, I worship the Shalikram every day, but there's only one Shalikram. If you really want to know who's a better devotee, Indra is a better devotee. Because he's including all demigods in worshipping Vishnu. I'm doing it alone. So Narada Muni goes to Indra. Indra says, haven't you heard that I was the one who tried to destroy Vrindavan during the Govardhan Lila? How can I be a devotee? Better devotee than me is Brahma. Because Brahma is coming from the navel of the Lord. Who is the father for Brahma? Who is the mother for Brahma? The Supreme Lord. Indra said, that's not my nature. I sometimes get attracted to some Apsharan and then I become a pig also sometimes. There are stories where Indra becomes a pig. He said, Brahma is the better devotee. Narad Muni goes to Brahma, who is Narad Muni's father. He said, I went around searching for the best devotee. Seems like it's in my home only. <laughs> my father. So then he came to Brahma. Brahma said, you know, I give benedictions to people like Kiran Nikoshini. And then the Lord has to come as half man and half lion. <laughs> I was the one who told Hiran Nikoshipu, neither during the day nor during the night, ni inside the house, outside the house, in the sky or the ground, man or animal, nails or weapon, you know, hand or weapon. And then the Lord has to cut a specific form of Nashinga Avatar, keeping my words yet at the same time to kill Hiran Nikoshipu. Brahma said, I do this all the time. So I'm not a devotee. Higher devotee is Lord Shiva. Naradmuni goes to Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva says, Are, I do this all the time. Who blessed Ravana? Me. All the demons come and take shelter of me because I'm Ashutosh. I very quickly give benedictions. And sometimes I fight even Vishnu, taking sides with my devotees. You see the story of Banasur. Lord Shiva takes side with Banasur to fight Vishnu. <laughs> So Lord Shiva said, I am not the best devotee. I come in this world as Sri Padadi Shankaracharya and I talk about my awards. So I am not the best devotee. Narad Muni said, to bataiye, aap kon hai? Lord Shiva said, better than me is Prahlad Maharaj. He's better than me. Because when Nashinga came, I got scared, but he didn't get scared. And he was ready standing there offering prayers. So Narad Muni now goes to his own disciple, Prahlad. He said, first I went to my father, but now I've come to my own disciple, Prahlad. Oh, Prahlad, you are the best devotee. Prahlad Maharaj said, what's the use? What kind of devotee am I? But when Nashinga came, I couldn't even offer a garland. He picked his own garland and he offered himself. What is that? The intestines of Hiranyakashipu. Prahlad said, I couldn't even make a flower garland. I didn't even give him a seat to sit down. He sat on Hiranyakashipu's throne himself. I didn't even offer him water. He drank blood of my father. What kind of a devotee is this? Just offering prayers but no service. Narad Muni said, so who's a better devotee? Prahlad Maharaj said, better than me is Hanuma. Because he was ready to set his body on fire and still serve Lanka. Ram Chandra by burning Lanka. When he went to, Narad Muni went to Hanuma. So Hanuman, you're the best devotee. Hanuman said, if I was the best devotee, Sri Ram should have taken me with him. He took everybody and he told me, you stay here, Chiranjeevi Hanuman. You stay on earth blessing others. Hanuman said, what kind of a devotee is that? If I was a great devotee, the Lord should have taken me with him. He said, the test of a good devotee is the Lord never leaves that devotee. So now when he said, then who's a better devotee? Hanuman said, the Pandavas. Because the Lord lived with them. Mujhe to chhodkar chale ka Shri Ram. Mujhe yahan chiran jivi bana diya. Bolo yahi raho. Dusron ko ashirvad do. You bless others, but Shri Ram left. He said, but the Pandavas, Krishna's always there. Akshay Patra, Krishna's running and coming. Draupadi needs help, Krishna's coming. He said, Hanuman said, here I am serving Shri Ram. There Ram as Krishna is serving the devotee. Their situation is higher. They are much better. Narad Muni goes to Pandavas, goes to Yudhishthir Maharaj. He said, you're the best devotee. Yudhishthir Maharaj said, if anybody reads our story, they will give up bhakti. 
they will think that if you become devotee means your life will become like this like the pandavas we are the worst preachers yudhishthir bharat said kabhi bhi kini ko kuch prashna hota hai bolta hai tu bhaton ke sath kyon hota hai bhakti ki hoti kunti ke sath ki draupadi ke sath ki pandav ke sath yudhishthir bharat said we are we have put our life example on the top anybody can see no, we don't want to perform that. दुर्योधन ने भक्ति नहीं की देखो कितने अच्छे से जिया था इन्होंने भक्ति की देखो क्या भक्ति करना ही नहीं है सो महाराज से वी आर नॉट गुड देन हु बेटर देन यू युधिष्ठिर महाराज से बेटर देन मी इस उद्धव बिकॉज वेन कृष्ण फीलिंग सेपरेशन फ्रॉम गंडा वेन वी सेट उद्धव एज अ मैसेजर नारदमणि केम इज एवरीवन फॉलोइंग द स्ट्रीम When Narada Muni came to Uddhava and said, "You are the best devotee," Uddhava said, "Agree." I also thought like this only, <laughs> but then Krishna sent me to Prindavan, and I saw the love of the Prashvasis. I saw the love of the Prajagopis, how they were crying and weeping. I was trying to convince them, "Don't feel separation." And the more I tried, the louder the Gopis cried. I was I was crying and they were crying. Uddhav said, "Whatever I learned from my guru Brahmaspati, none of that worked in front of the gopis." You see, when your tawa is very hot on the stove and you take two three drops of water and you put, what happens? You see sound coming on the tawa. So the heart of the gopis is like a hot tawa. And Uddhav has heard, "Pani bheko the prashant ho jaye." Because when you throw water, too much water, the fire will be extinguished. But Uddhava had only two, three drops. What he had learned from Brahmaspati, and that increased the heat of the separation in the heart of the gopis. Mm. <laughs> so Uddhava said, "I also thought I am the best devotee." But then when I went to Prindavan and I looked at the gopis, Uddhav shuddha ho gayo. Uddhav became shuddha. He became purified. उद्धव शुद्ध हो गए ब्रजगोपिन के बोल बजाई ज्ञान की दुगदुगी बाजत प्रेम का ढोल उद्धव के डमरू डमरू विच इज कॉल्ड ज्ञान एंड यू डूइंग दिस इन फ्रंट ऑफ द गोपी शोइंग हिज नॉलेज एंड वॉट इट द गोपीज डू दिक्कोल कॉल्ड प्रेम एंड एंड उद्धव Looking at the love of the gopis, then Shila Sanatan Goswami says, "Narad Muni being impressed, he went to the gopis. He said, 'You are the best devotees.' The gopis said, 'No, we have no love at all. Our love is like a small mustard seed, and on Narada, the love of Shri Mati Radhani is bound to bear.' Narad Muni comes at the lotus feet of Shri Mati Radhani and surrenders." Having found the best devotee in Krishna, the story is there in Brahmad Bhagavatam. It's over a few chapters. I just told you in like five minutes. But uh, there are a lot of verses, a lot of discussions between each person. So the point is, the gopis headed by Shrimati Radharani are the best devotees. They are even better than Hanuman, even better than the Pandavas, even better than everyone. And I am not saying this. So Nathan Goswami Pad is saying this. And in the Gaudiya Parampara, the goal that our Acharyas came to give is to become maid servants of Shri Mati Radharani. That mood of being young gopis serving Radharani. That is the mood of the Gaudiya Parampara. You can see all the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Rupa Goswami was a maid servant of Radharani. Sanatan Goswami, maid servant of Radharani. Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Bhatti Goswami, Gopal Bhatti Goswami, Jeev Goswami. श्यामानंद प्रभु रसिकानंद प्रभु नरोत्तम दास ठाकुर श्रीनिवास आचार्य रामचंद्र कविराज एवरीवन इज अट सर्वेंट ऑफ श्रीमती राधारानी श्री भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर गौरकिशोर दास बाबू जी महाराज जगन्नाथ दास बाबू जी महाराज प्रभुपाद सरस्वती ठाकुर आवर प्रभुपाद एंड ऑल आवर गुरु वर्क दे आर कमिंग टू गिव द करंट ऑफ पंजरी भाव बींग अट सर्वेंट ऑफ श्रीमती राधारानी वाई एम आई सेंग ऑल दिस बिकॉज दैट्स द सिक्स गेम in the gurvashtaka teaching us what is the highest goal so please repeat nikunjayo no ratike li siddhe nikunjayo no ratike li siddhe ya ya li yo tira bhikshaniya ya ya li yo tira bhikshaniya 
वंदे गुरु श्री चरणारविंदम वंदे गुरु श्री चरणारविंदम सो निकुंज मींस वृंदावन द फॉरेस्ट ऑफ वृंदावन यू नो मींस द कपो प्रधान कृष्णा रति केली मींस देयर बेस्ट टाइम्स सो in braja the beautiful pastimes of radha krishna siddhe which are perfect which are beautiful which are very wonderful astonishing attractive there what does shri guru do we see shri guru in one form in this world right as a sanyasi as a grihastha you know in a form right that we can perceive that's his swarup in this world but he or she in this world is a maid servant of shrimati radharani in that world so what it means is ya 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 means whatever whatever jo bhi jo bhi jaise hindi mein kehte hain ya ya ali bhi ali bhi means gopis jo bhi seva gopiyon dwara ya ya ali bhi yukti apekshaniya गोपियों के युक्ति के अनुसार और अपेक्षा के अनुसार जो भी सेवाएं हैं उसमें श्री गुरु अति दक्ष है एक्सपर्ट है इसी कारण प्रभु के लिए अति वल्लभ है बहुत प्रिय है और उन गुरु के चरण हम इस जगत में सेवा करते हैं डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड एवरीबडी अंडरस्टैंड आई रिपीट दिस इन इंग्लिश सो निकुंज You know, Rati Keli. Nikunja means Brindavan. You know means divine couple. Rati Keli means pastimes, and Siddhi means perfection. The perfect pastimes of Radha Krishna in Brindavan, they're all arranged by the gopis. These manjaris, maid servants of Radha Rani, they are serving the gopis in arranging the meeting of Radha and Krishna, and decorating the swing, decorating the boat festival, decorating the forest. with the right birds with the right animals with the right rangoli they have the right scents you know in in fragrance in eating in the beverages during holy leela the gopis will say we will play a game between radha and krishna what is the game radha and krishna will be on the swing and they are swinging and krishna's camp all gopis krishna's camp gopis radha rani side gopis and they will throw water balloons on radha and krishna as they are swinging and what the manjaris have to do they have to jump and take that on them they should protect radha and krishna from the water splash and between radha and krishna at the end of that time whoever is more drenched with water loses which means if you want to save your swami ni radha rani or you want to save krishna then you have to make sure when were the water balloon is coming you jump and take it on yourself so that they are safe you see so there are attractive games like this during holi so the maid servants the manjaris they arrange according to what the gopis say so nikunj you know ratikeli se play being perfect in the arranging of the pastimes of radha and krishna and vrindavan ya ya ali bhi ali bhi means gopis by the gopis whatever services ya ya whatever services yukti according to their planning and apeksha according to their expectation whatever is there what the manjaris do tatra ati daksha they expertly executed and therefore ati vallabha they are very dear to radha krishna and those manjaris take forms bodies and come in this world as shri guru Does everyone understand so ganga comes from the lotus feet of shri hari so those who bathe in the ganga where do they go back to the lotus feet right that which washes the lotus feet of the lord and comes if you bathe in that she will take you back to the lotus feet so those sadhus who come in this world as maid servants of radha and krishna if you follow them and you surrender to them where do you go you go where they go <laughs> you're singing this but how deep how profound so the sixth verse gives the gift 
of praying that prayojan prayojan means our goal our goal kobi bhav manjuri bhav to be made servant of ram and krishna this is given in the sixth verse whatever shri guru wants if we execute then the guru will take us actually shri prabhupada was asked to the explanation of this verse shri prabhupada said in the spiritual world those who are made servants they always listen to the gopis whatever the gopis say decorate the swing they decorate the swing decorate the boat they decorate the boat have arrange a singing competition between radha and krishna and have expert instruments they arrange prabhupad said in this world that comes as following the instruction of shri guru if you follow the instruction of shri guru then you develop that mood so when you go to the spiritual world you follow the instruction of your superior so prabhupad said for you nikunjay yunarati kali siddhe means book distribution to that disciple because 50 years ago prabhupad wanted to explore the whole world with books so he said i am telling you just like they are telling them to decorate the kunj i am telling you to flood the world with books so following the instruction of shri guru is manjari upasana is the worship of radha and krishna in that mode did we understand so this is the sixth gift seventh and eighth are connected so i'll take them together साक्षाधरित्वेन समस्त शास्त्रे उक्तस तथा भाव यदेव सद्धि किंतु प्रभोर्य प्रिय एव तस्य वन्दे गुरु श्रीशरादि शास्त्रस्य न गुरु इस साक्षाधरि साक्षाधरित्वेन समस्त शास्त्रे समस्त शास्त्र ऑल द शास्त्रस्य गुरु इस एस गुड एस कृष्णा एंड उक्तस तथा भाव यदेव सद्धि हि सद्धि हि द साधुस आल्सो उक्त दे आल्सो दे से द सेम थिंग The sadhus say this, and shastra say this. But what does the guru say? No, I am not God. Kintu prabhorya priya eva dasya. I am simply the servant. So he teaches us humility. Although he is as good as God, he never says I am God. He just says, Oh, I am the servant of my guru Maharaj. So the sixth gift we said was prem tattva, which means the goal, and the seventh gift is the indiyata. teaching us sadachar that we as disciples should worship shri guru as good as god but guru himself doesn't think i am god he thinks i am the disciple of my guru maharaj that's the same that sadachar the tattva of dinata humility and the eighth says yasya prasada now here's very important portion yasya prasada bhagavat prasado by getting the mercy of shri guru you will get the mercy of krishna but now yes here a prasad if you don't get his prasad na gati kutopi there is no gati gati has two meanings destination so if you get the mercy of shri guru you get the mercy of krishna but yes here a prasad if you don't get the mercy of shri guru na gati kutopi you don't have a destination and even if you trying for advancement you will have no speed if someone is rowing their boat but the anchor is not removed the boat's not going to go anywhere so sometimes we sing it like this yasya prasada bhagavat prasado yasya prasada na gati kutopi this is wrong yes. yasya prasada yasya plus prasad means yasya prasad which means by whose mercy but yasya plus a prasad he whose mercy we don't get when you put them together it becomes yasya plus a prasad yasya prasad so when we sing we should sing yasya prasad bhagavat prasado yasya prasad nagati kuto o guru if i get your mercy If I follow your instructions, I will get the mercy of Krishna. But if I displease you, then I will not get Krishna. Therefore, what should we do? This is the eighth gift. This is Guru Tattva. Guru Tattva. Hmm? So what's the what's the way? Dhyayan, meditate, stuvan, glorify. How many times? Three sandhya. That is Gayatri. 
worship, glorify, and contemplate with gratitude what Guru has given you in your life three times a day. Dhyayan, meditate. Stuvan, glorify. Tasya, yashaha, his glory. Tri Sandhya. Tri Sandhya means Brahma Muhurta, afternoon, sunset. Three times, sit. If you don't have Diksha Mantras, Brahma Initiation, no problem, sit. And for two minutes, think and contemplate what gifts you have received in your life. And if you have Diksha Mantras, then you chant your Gayatri three times a day. And one day, Guru Shri Chaitanya. So in this way, eight gifts are given to the Guru Ashtakam. Maya Tattva, Kirtan Tattva, Vigraha Tattva, Prasad Tattva, Ishta Tattva, Radha Krishna Tattva, Prem Tattva, Dainya Tattva, Dinata Tattva, and Guru Tattva. And Guru gives these eight gifts. And anybody who sings this Guru Ashtakam in this mood, with effort, early in the morning, every single day, Yastena Prinda Vananatha Saksha Seva Yvala Pritam Shantayla. They will get the, word, the service of Radha and Krishna in Prinda. Akhand Guru Tattva Ki Thank you.